So hello everyone, I would like to welcome you to today's presentation of nations. Uh, today it's uh, about Lithuania and before we start I would like to uh, tell you something about upcoming events. The first one is the presentation of nations next week. Uh, next, week next week it's going to be about France. So it will be again streaming here from Panda Point. Uh, it will start at 7 p.m as usual and the other event is the quiz night and that's gonna be on uh, wednesday and it starts at 8 pm again it will be online and all the information will be uh, on the facebook group we will post there soon so that's all i wanted to say and uh, enjoy the presentation and guys can you come Okay, so hello. Um, so we will present a country called Lithuania. And first question would be probably where the fuck is Lithuania? So it's here. Yeah, so it's one of the Baltic states bordering the Baltic Sea. Um, it's between Latvia and Poland. Um, so we found a short video to to summarize um, just a bit about what we will be talking about. Option A. You met a charming guy or attractive girl, you had a chit chat, not as an accent, and ask where you're from. Lithuania. This is it. This phase is called. Where the f is it's here, between Latvia and Poland. It's part of the United States. I mean Baltic states. It's like the mini-me version of Africa. Our flag represents sun, weed, I mean grass, and pure blood. I mean ketchup, I mean this guy's blood. And that's real original because no other country has a similar flag, right? We always get a twitch when foreigners say, Oh, I know Lithuania, it's part of Russia. You are tearing me apart, Lisa! Riga is the capital, am I right? <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye, my lover. This is why we have Goodbye, one of the highest suicide friend. ratios in the world. <laughs> no, Vilnius is the fucking capital. MC Duggy de Minas had some magic mushrooms, had a nightmare, saw an iron bolt. Don't fuck around! Built a castle, yes, that's our castle, and it's totally not dying right now. These guys were the original Dukes of Hazard. Yeah! Our main exports are meat and beer, gorgeous women. And basketball players, also known as legends. In Lithuania, it's common to have basketball marked as a religion. Although there's only five players on the field, there are three million Lithuanians all over the globe who could do a better job during the game. Kurva. Neither blat or kurva are Lithuanian swim words. We use them because ours simply suck. Jale Ruta means green flower, or my friend Ruta had a mental breakdown and now she's painting herself green. Rupus milte is gritty flower, usually said when the joy powder was bad. And the worst one we have, Povelnu, is under devil. If you know what I mean. We do have all four seasons, winter, spring, summer, autumn. Lithuania aka Lietuva is the sum of Lietus, Va, Rain, Year. We have the fastest public Wi-Fi. You can turn your pub into PUBG or watch porn in a toilet with no lag guarantee. That's got to be the best part I've ever seen. 
Option B. You're a Lithuanian yourself, you're a freaking nationalist, you ain't a pussy, you take your bros out and make your walls of your own. You secretly believe Lithuania could be the best country in the world, but in reality, you know that's complete bullshit. You're not a fan of Polish people since your guy like Sheffield swore into Queen Ledwiga. Yes, he dishonored the bro code and a lot of chop chopping happened after that, but it's time to seal the grudge, especially when both of you can drink the same amount of vodka. UK and Ireland is your second home, and London is unofficially called Little Lithuania. Although you hear Lithuanian word there at least once a day, you pretend you're not one of them and shut your mouth because once it comes to real life, you're a silent person and mind your own fucking business. You've probably seen every video with the word Lithuania in it and you freaking like, I mean love black humor and that's why you shared this video. Option C. You stumble upon this video and your reaction to it was... Litha fucking what? So, brief history of Lithuania. Uh, the first time when the name of the Lithuania itself was mentioned anywhere in the written state was in 1009, when uh, the missionary monk uh, Holy Brunon came to Lithuania to spread the religion. Uh, our pagans killed him on the border, so that's why we were mentioned. So, yeah, very beautiful first mention in history. Um, our this guy is our first and uh, the only king we had ever. His name is Mindaugas and he was crowned in 1253. Um, so, yeah, that's statue for him, the one and only. Um, the first and the biggest part of Lithuania was baptized in late 14th century. And uh, uh, the whole country became Christian in early 15th century with the help of uh, Polish King Jagaila. Um, when the Grand Duke uh, Vitutas ruled over Lithuania, we were the biggest powerhouse and the biggest uh, country in the whole Europe. We were from the Baltic Sea to the Black Sea. Um, we have a lot of history, common history with Polish guys, so we should love them, but we, I should say, hate them. But in uh, late 16th century, Lithuania and Poland became the Commonwealth by signing the Union of Lublin. Um, in 1579, the first printed book in Lithuanian language was uh, printed in Prussia by Martinus Mazvidas. Um, and in the same year, we had our first university open, and it's Vilnius University, and is the oldest university in whole Eastern Europe. Um, in very late 18th century, Lithuania accepted the first in whole Europe and second in the whole world constitution, the written one. Um, so this is the constitution. And this is how it looked like when they were signing it and accepting it. Um, in 18th century, Commonwealth fell apart and big part of Lithuania became, came under Russian Empire's uh, influence. So, uh, as you can see, in the top, there's Lithuanian's flag when we were part of Soviet Union. Um, because in 1918, we got the independence from the Russian Empire. And uh, when the Soviets came over in 1944, we became the part of Soviet Union. And we really hate that part of our, our history. history. Um, and in 1990, uh, we were the first country of whole Soviet Union that became independent. Uh, we were the first from the Baltic states to gain independence. We were the first ones to join NATO, to join the Euro, uh, that to join the EU, and the last ones to accept Euro, because we are what we are.
So I hope that you enjoyed the video uh, about our nature and now I'm going to present you our capital cities. During the whole existence of Lithuania, we had four capital cities and to all our loyal viewers who are still watching after history part, I'm going to mention them. So therefore, uh, first and foremost, our capital uh, right now is Vilnius and uh, right now it's also the largest city and it, it has uh, the biggest population as well and it's probably most visited city in whole Lithuania. Uh, if you are planning to visit Vilnius, uh, I highly recommend uh, seeing of course Gediminas Castle, Hill of Three Crosses, um, Ujupus, Old Town, Cathedra and so on and seeing everything would be simply impossible in a short time of span. Then, then we had Konos as our capital city between First and Second World War, and it's our second largest city right now. It's uh, worth to not only visit Vilnius but also to visit Konos, uh, Nida, Trakai, and with that note, I represent Trakai as our third capital city. It was our capital during the rule of Grand Duke, Duke uh, Vidutas. During that time, Lithuania was the largest country in Europe, as we mentioned, and uh, our country area was even expanded to the Black Sea. So, why you should consider visiting Trakai? The most common answer is for Trakai Castle, uh, which began its construction in the 14th century uh, on the rule of uh, Grand Duke Castutus, and later on it was finished by his son uh, Vitutas the Great. And during that time, Trakai was one of the main centers of the Lithuania, and uh, the castle had great strategic impo importance. And later, Soviet communist reconstructed the castle and uh, established a museum there. And last but not least uh, is Karnavia, uh, which was the first capital of Lithuania. And it's not really much to cover here, but I will quickly add that it was capital during the rule, the ruling of our first and last king, Mendugas. And although there aren't any uh, old buildings left there. Uh, it's still great looking small village with a superb landscape. And Coronian Spit. It's not, it wasn't our capital at any time, but it's worth mentioning it uh, because it's a place for tourists and to relax and enjoy their free time. And, uh, Coron and it, the Coronian Spit has great legend and uh, it was made and it say, says that it was the Coronian Spit was made by a giant woman called Neria who was sorry for all the fishermen crashing their ships in the sea so she carried sand in her apron and spilled all the sand into the sea and we are going to play another video about our between
So now I'll talk about the national stuff of our country. So our national bird is stork. We have the highest population of them in whole Europe. Um, and we believe that they bring wellness to our house if their nest is built nearby. Um, our national animal is the scent. It's European bison. Um, they were extinct for a few centuries, but in the mid 20th century, we brought them back and now they're endangered species in our country. Um, our national tree is oak. Um, our oldest oak is called Stelmujas oak or Stelmujas azulas in our language, and it's three and a half thousand years old. Um, so our national plant is Ruta, and we also have a curse word Ruta Jaloya, as you saw in the first video. So yeah, um, and about the food, we have um, also another video, but yeah, it's very longing to see all the food as Lithuania. We're starting out with a super traditional Lithuanian drink. This is called gira in Lithuanian, G-I-R-A, also known as kvas, and it looks like this, and it's homemade. And everyone has told me, you have to try gira, but it has to be homemade. Don't go getting it in the bottles at a store. So we have listened to your advice. And it's a sour drink made from bread. Whoa. Oh, it's so good. It's not how I thought it was gonna taste at all. I already love bread. What a brilliant idea. Let's turn bread into this. <laughs> this next dish I'm super excited about because it's Lithuanian rye bread that's been fried in oil with garlic and there's a cheese sauce on it. It's apparently like a comfort food that is really uh, nostalgic for a lot of Lithuanian people. So I'm so excited about this. Oh my God. The cheese sauce. Oh. It's so good! And the crunchiness of the bread together. Oh my god! My mind is blown. Hallelujah. Here's a god! And he loves fried bread. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Okay, we're trying another homemade Lithuanian drink that was recommended. This is called Cranberry Pap. P-A-P. Oh wow, it's really thick. It's not too sweet. It's also not too tart. It's kind of just nice in the middle. Very smooth going down. And I like the pink color. It's very <laughs> cheerful. <laughs> this is the mixed Lithuanian curd cheese set. So there's the hard cheese, soft cheese, garlic cheese, and then spicy cheese. And in the middle, this is natural Lithuanian honey. I love cheese. I dropped this in the honey. It's sinking. Oh my god. I've completely lost it. All I have is honey going in with the spoon. Cheese rescue. Next we're going to try something called castinas. This here in the middle is the castinas and it's served with hot potato and sour cream and then some vegetables. But this is actually kind of a sauce in solid form, if that makes sense. So it's made by heating sour cream and butter and stirring with circular hand motions and then cooling it until it reaches this consistency. And then it's usually served with hot potatoes is how it's apparently goes down the best. Butter, sour cream, together. That's a dream team right there. <laughs> realize I'm not sure how much castinas you're supposed to eat with the, with the potato. Mm. Is that a good amount? I don't know. Oh my god. That's a miracle in my mouth. Butter and sour cream. Okay. If you're a sauce person, you know I'm a sauce person. You know who you are. This is a revelation. <laughs> Remember how about five seconds ago I was like, I'm not sure how much castinas to put on my potato. <laughs> well now I know as much as will fit on my fork. <laughs> <laughs> that much. <laughs> you adapt quickly. Mmm, <laughs> oh my god, that's ridiculous. 
Our first soup has arrived and it's a bread bowl with mushroom soup inside. And it's really popular in the winter because it's a nice warm, hearty soup. And I just love the bread bowl. Oh yeah, look at that. Looks amazing. Mm. Oh, I mean, you're even gonna like that. Really? Yes. It's almost like a gravy. Oh. So, <laughs> if you like gravy, and I know you do. Who doesn't like gravy? Yeah. Mmm, I'm gonna have this all to myself. Not so fast. It's like half done already. You know what? Any soup that brings its own bowl and has its own hat, that's a soup I want to get to know. <laughs> that's true. A soup with its own outfit. Oh, I actually don't hate it. Hold on. Wow, there is a god. I'm gonna shock you right now. I like it. Wow. Turns out, in Lithuania, I like mushroom soup. <laughs> No one is more surprised than me, let me tell you. <laughs> is there anything I don't like in Lithuania? God, <laughs> even mushroom soup tastes good. Mm. Oh Lord. Our next soup has arrived and I have been waiting for this. Look at the jubilant color of this soup. <laughs> this is cold beetroot soup served with, what else, hot potatoes. <laughs> I've heard a lot of Lithuanians actually say, we eat potatoes with potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> and that's certainly proving true so far. So this is normally actually more of a summer meal because it's, you know, so refreshing and cold and the mushroom is more of a wintertime meal. But to be honest, I think that the color of this is just picking me right up in the cold darkness of winter. So I say eat it anytime you want to. And it's a very creamy blend of sour beetroot juice with tangy kefir or buttermilk poured over grated pickles and hard boiled eggs. And it's usually left to set until all the wonderful flavors are combined. And then it's seasoned with dill, as you can clearly see the green with the pink here. I'm a huge soup lover. I think cold soup is a fantastic <laughs> invention. I was about to blow on it. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently the best way to eat this is the cold soup with the hot potatoes. So I'm going to dip it like the potatoes getting a pink bath. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's a big spoonful. <gasps> mm, mm, mm. Okay, that was a huge bite, but that was amazing. This Lithuanian feast just keeps getting better and better. <laughs> the moment has arrived to try Lithuania's national dish. <laughs> this is Cepeline. <laughs> and they are not messing around with these potato dumplings. Look at how enormous these dumplings are. Have you ever? And they're made with a mixture of raw and cooked potato dough stuffed with pork inside, and you can get them served with a variety of different sauces. Traditionally, they come with sour cream and bacon sauce, cracklings. Oh, and the coolest part about these, the name, Zeppeline, is because the shape resembles a zeppelin. So that's how you can remember Lithuania's national dish. All right, let's see what a zeppelin looks like inside. Oh, oh. there we go. There we go. Okay, I feel like my first bite should have some of everything. Yeah, get in the middle part. And then we take some sour cream and some bacon sauce. My God, just something light, you know. Yeah. It was salad or this. Mmm, <laughs> <laughs> the texture is so good. Mmm. I'm diving right into the middle. Mmm. <laughs> oh, that is too good for words. <laughs> Give the man a minute, everyone. This is so good. I'm gonna need a hundred more bites of this. Moving right along from one potato dish to another, of course, we are having -da, potato <laughs> pancakes. You all knew this moment was coming, of course. Very traditional to have potato pancakes. So, bacon on this side, and then salmon with these, and two different sauces. Now when you have salmon with the potato pancakes, it's always served in Lithuania with the curd sauce. And this is the crackling sauce, so you have sort of bacon with your bacon, if you will. So, 
Let's tuck into this. Wakey, wakey. Time to put the crackling on the bacon. <laughs> What's not to love about a potato pancake? Potato pancake. Two of the most wonderful words in the world. Okay, now for the salmon with the potato pancake. Feeling saucy. Oh, <laughs> you're feeling very saucy. Just a touch. Oh dear God. Mmm. Mm. <laughs> okay. <gasps> the bacon one was really <laughs> okay. The Lithuanian food is just putting. I don't know. Something... This is what happens when you have too many potatoes. <laughs> Something's coming over me, you guys. I like the bacon one, but I love the salmon one. I'm going in. Doesn't that look amazing? How dare you put some green on there? <laughs> this is a green free zone. <laughs> There's no green here. <laughs> Potato it's only. All smoke and mirrors. I love how the greens on the plate yeah. make you feel better even though it's all like a healthy plate. <laughs> um so hope you enjoyed our food video. Because we enjoyed it very much and we miss our home now. So now we'll talk about a um, few our national celebrations. Uh, uh, so its first one is Joninus or St. John's Day. Um, I know in Latvia it's called Ligo, uh, where you burn uh, fires, you make uh, the flower crown, I don't know how it's called. Yeah, you jump over the fire, that's how my friend got his ass burned. So now he has his car. Um, second one is Užgovines. I know that our Polish friends have something similar. So it's like a Halloween for us, but it's uh, at the end of the winter when the masks are to scare the winter away. Um, we burn that beautiful lady also on fire as a symbol that winter will be gone. Um, we eat a lot of pancakes because they symbolize the sun. Um, and we have a fight between the skinny and the fat guy symbolizing the fight between the, the seasons of the year. Yeah. Um, also we have Vėlinės, it's a memorial day for the dead people, that's when the old... Uh, oh, when the graveyards are just amazing at night, so yeah, a lot of candles and everybody just visits their dead relatives. It's like, they have sim something similar in Mexico, but we don't have that kind of festival, just a very beautiful day to remember our d dead ones. And the fourth one is Mindel Guinness, and it comes from our King Mindogas when we celebrate the day of his name. So all these photos are taken in Carnavia, the old capital. Um, we redo our traditional, you know, the pot sculpting, or we try to carve the boat out of a log and swim it uh, with it, and we always fail, but. Yeah, we we'll at least try. We have some night fights to represent the medieval times of our glory. Um, and yeah, I think that's about the celebrations. Now about the festivals, the fun part of Lithuania. So we have the Yaga gathering. Yaga gathering, uh, similar to Baba Yaga in Russian. Um, it's trippy. LSD style, hippie style festival in a forest where everyone is just EDM dancing. Uh, yeah, haven't been there. Not sure wanna go, but if you like that style, you should try it. Um, second one is a song festival. Um, I know that's part of UNESCO and there's a lot there are thousands of people singing uh, national songs of lithuania not not the ant anthem and all the traditional songs uh, there's some dancing going around and yeah so it's i think it's unique to us not sure about it but it's a big part of our culture and it's happening every year then we have karkle it's uh, named after the place where it takes uh, where happens, so in the city of Karkle, and as you can see in the photo, it's happening on the beach near the sea, so that's why it's unique. And it's one also of the biggest festivals that's going in Lithuania. And the last but not least, the biggest festival that gathers around more than 20,000 people a year. 
we had David Goethe play in this festival. It's Granatas Live. A few years ago, we burned the place where it happened. So it was banned for one year because it's going in uh, the city of Rumšiškes, which is also the city as the National Museum of Lithuanian uh, Culture, where all the antique houses are built with hay uh, roofs. And yeah, that's why it was burned. And now, uh, famous Lithuanian people, which you should know about. So, uh, the first person, the first person that we are going to talk, that I'm going to, to talk about is Hannibal Lecter. Uh, Hannibal Lecter is the villain and main character of the Silence of the Lambs, and though, though fictional, he was uh, born in Lithuania. The book author, the book author. Thomas Harris, uh, he created uh, this character as a Lithuanian who later on moved to USA and over the time gained USA citizenship. Uh, then we had Jason Sudeikis, the, he is well known uh, actor and comedian that uh, who shot the fame on Saturday Live Night in the 2000s. He's, rela he's related to Lithuania uh, because his father is from Irish and Lithuania, Lithuanian family. Then we have a father and a son, Arvidas and Domantas Sabonis. Uh, Arvidas Sabonis is the most famous and uh, it's safe to say that he is the best ever Lithuanian former basketball player. Uh, his most known achievements uh, are three times SSR champion, two times uh, European champion, one time world champion, and one time Olympic champion. And he was the player who also played for in the, in the, in the NBA for Portland Trail Blazers. And Domantas Sabonis, who got drafted in 2016 by Oklahoma the Thunder and uh, then after one year traded got traded to Indiana Pacers and this year he was even an all-star. Then we have uh, Sharunas Iskavichus uh, who is who at first was well known basketball player. He was four times Euroleague champion, two times Spanish champion, Greece champion, uh, I believe uh, also Israel champion and he also played in the NBA for uh, Indiana Pacers and Golden State Warriors and now he's coaching uh, first he was coaching for our best basketball team Jalgeris uh, and now this year he moved to Spain to train uh, Barcelona He was also the man who beat the Dream Team in 2004. Yeah. Then we have Ruta Meutita, who is a Lithuanian swimmer, uh, Olympic gold medalist, and world record holder in 100 meter breast uh, stroke. And at the age of 15, she had already broken 11 Lithuanian women swimming records. And at the age of 17, she became the first and only swimmer in history to win all of Ibo Junior and Senior International Swimming Championships at least once. And in 2019, she retired. Uh, then we have Zdruna Savitskas, the big Z. Who is a Lithuanian powerlifter and a professional strongman. Uh, he is the only modern competitor to have won every major strongman competition. His achievements are crazy. He is four-time world strongest man, eight-time Arnold strongman classic winner, three-time Europe, Europe strongest man, 16 times uh, Lithuanian strongest man. And uh, the last one is Dainoro, who is, uh, his real name is Edvinas Pechopsis. Uh, he's a Lithuanian DJ and music producer. He's 
He's most known for his international hit in my mind with Gigi uh, D'Agostino. And he also he has also a couple of famous songs like Hangover, Obsessed, Rockstar. And we will probably play uh, a video about the song. on the situation either you are drinking or somebody sneezed so yeah then Pratam, you are welcome and uh, Tanod, enjoy your meal then we have a couple of words that i did not include because i didn't get the permission <laughs> so quick that means a cop and bad and Morozov, that dress of my partner, uh, and even Adidas. Adidas. We were, we were Adidas. Yeah. Usually Adidas or Nike tracksuits, so yeah, I think they're common in, also in Russia and all the other countries that but... Um, in Lithuania, we have also Paris, Venice, London, Switzerland. Um, we know, I know that we have also Caucasia as a town. Um, we have um, districts in Vilnius called Jerusalem, Shanghai, New York, and Kanchatka. So, yeah, that's a lot of foreign places for a small country like ours. But, yeah, all the world is around us, or in us. I don't know how to express myself, but, yeah. And probably to summarize everything that we said, and I hope you're still watching, uh, we found this perfect video that tells everything what we just said, but in a more beautiful and fluent way than we did. So That's yeah. true. So hope you like it. I've been traveling the world for the past five years, and every time I'd meet people on the road, they'd ask, where do you come from? I'd always come back saying Lithuania, just to hear them go, eh? Then I would spend 15 minutes explaining what Lithuania was, that it was actually an independent country, that we had our own language, and that we weren't located on planet Mars. At some point, it became a little annoying to have to explain the same thing over and over and over and over again. So I decided to make this video where I'll tell you everything you need to know about my beautiful country so that the next time we meet on some random mountain in the Himalayas, you'll go, dude, I know what Lithuania is. So without further ado, here's everything you need to know about my gorgeous little country, Lithuania. Over 2,000 years before Christ, the Baltic tribes occupied the lands of the current Baltic states. These Baltic people traded amber with the Romans and then fought the Vikings. In those times, only one small tribe was known as Lithuanians, but it was this tribe that consolidated the majority of the other tribes. This process accelerated under Grand Duke Mindaugas, who became a Christian, received a crown from the Pope, and became the first and the only king of Lithuania in 1253. After his death, the Grand Duchy of Lithuania fell back to pagan ways, leading to a centuries-long conflict with the Teutonic Knights. In the 14th century, ruled by Grand Duke Vitudas, Lithuania became the largest country in Europe, stretching from the Baltic to the Black Sea. In the 16th century, a new threat came from the east, with Moscow rapidly gaining power. In response, Lithuania and Poland formed a commonwealth in 1569. However, the Commonwealth lost a series of wars, and in the late 18th century, the country was divided among the three superpowers of those times, with the main Lithuanian lands falling under Russian control. By 1865, printed Lithuanian language was banned. However, Knigna literally book carriers, kept the Lithuanian language alive by smuggling banned books and setting up legal schools in villages. Then, after World War I, Lithuania managed to once again become a free country, 
called the Republic of Lithuania. The short period of freedom was cut short again by World War II. Initially, Lithuania was occupied by the Soviet Union, then the Nazi Germany, but eventually fell back to the hands of the Soviet Union again. In this era, hundreds of thousands of people were killed or expelled to Siberian cattle carriages. The Soviet occupation lasted for 45 years and only ended in 1990. A massive independence movement was established and made it clear that not even the Soviet machine was able to suppress the Baltic people's will for freedom. One of the biggest achievements of the independence movement was called the Baltic Way, which was a peaceful political demonstration organized in 1989, when two million people joined hands forming a 600 kilometer long human chain through the Baltic countries, thus demonstrating unity in their efforts towards freedom. Finally, on the 11th of March, 1990, Lithuania became the first Soviet-controlled territory to restore independence and has been a fast-growing country for the last 28 years. In the 21st century, Lithuania has become a super fun European country that's been run by an awesome woman president for the last nine years. She's so cool that even the president of the United States of America fights for her attention by shoving people around. <laughs> Where are your matters, Donald? What's, what's, what's happening? <laughs> We are disputably known to be the geographical center of Europe. Sorry, Poland and Ukraine, you guys haven't built a memorial for the center of Europe, so I guess we are the center now. <laughs> right here. Yes. And we are absolutely crazy about basketball. Most young kids try themselves out playing basketball, and some of them grow up to be great players, like Arvada Sabonis, Jadruna Salgalkas, and Jonas Valanciunas. Vesalik, up fake, strong move! Even the Soviet Union's national basketball team at one point was comprised of four out of five Lithuanian starting players. And we are one of the only three teams in the world that have beat the United States at the Olympics after 1990. Foul, Odom! And the United States has lost to Lithuania. A tiny country of three million people no one knows about beat the United States of America at the Olympics? Oh, that must have hurt, bro. Our most famous dish is called Zeppelin, named after a Zeppelin airship. It's these huge potato pastries with meat inside and sour cream on top. We also have vedere, which is pig's intestine stuffed with meat and potatoes and sour cream on the side. If you're looking to gain another few extra kilos, check out Jamaichu Blini. Next level potato pancakes that are filled with meat and, yes, you guessed it, sour cream on top. Last but not least, let's not forget my personal favorite, the infamous, the legendary, the one and only, my boy, Shal Tivarshe. Yes, your eyes ain't playing you. It really is a cold pink beetroot soup with dill, onions, eggs, potatoes inside, and of course, sour cream on top. Lithuania boasts four very distinct seasons. Autumn, when it's raining all the time. Winter, when you pray you won't freeze to death today. Spring, when the nature comes alive with the most magnificent colors. And summer, when everyone's out on the beach trying to soak up enough sun for the whole year. Spoiler alert, it never works out. Ooh, yeah! We have tons of lush forests, countless huge lakes, and magnificent coastal dunes. Also, don't forget to bring some next level hiking gear because our tallest mountain reaches the elevation of 294 meters above sea level, making us one of the flattest countries in the world. <laughs> hey, that's 
That's it. That's that's the, the highest part in the country, right here. <laughs> Snow-capped mountains. I'm above the clouds. What's happening? Oh, let's try to make friends with the horse. We should we should become friends on Facebook now. I don't want to sound like I've got purple glasses on, but there are quite a few other really interesting facts about Lithuania that I thought you should know. Our capital, Vilnius, is one of the very few capitals in the world that you can fly a hot air balloon over. Uh, apparently. Linguists say that of all the languages spoken today, Lithuanian is the closest to ancient Sanskrit, making it one of the oldest languages in the world, and also super, super, super difficult. Vilnius University was established in 1579, making it the oldest university in Eastern Europe. We also boast one of the fastest internet speeds in the world and are sometimes referred to as the Northern European capital of tech startups. If your mouth is wet for that cold pink soup and you want to get beaten by first graders in the game of basketball or visit the very disputable, yet we have the monumental, not that disputable, geographical center of Europe, come visit Lithuania. These are my top favorite touristy places you should explore. First, the castle of Trakai. It's a massive medieval castle situated literally in the center of a large lake, just outside our capital Vilnius. This castle was built by Vitotas the Great when Lithuania was the largest country in Europe and was the political center for the whole country. The Hill of Crosses, a UNESCO World Heritage Site in the north of Lithuania that features over 100,000 crosses from all around the world and looks absolutely magical. Sand dunes of Nida, the only sand dunes in the whole country that are so beautiful and desert-like, they make you stop and wonder where the camel's at. And finally, the place where I was born, the one and only, another UNESCO World Heritage Site, the Old Town of Vilnius. It's one of the largest surviving medieval old towns in Northern Europe that features an absolutely legendary cathedral, a gorgeous castle tower, the Hill of Three Crosses, the Republic of Užepis, and tons of other cool spots. Now that you watched the whole video, you need to promise me two things. First, when you meet me on some random mountain in the Himalayas, approach me and say, dude, you come from that really cool tiny country in Europe that has the best soup ever or what? Secondly, post this video on your social media with the hashtag Shaltibarshche and show your friends how knowledgeable you are about them tiny, gorgeous countries of the world. Thank you very much for watching the video and uh, stay awesome wherever you are in the world. Bang! So, thank you for your attention and sticking around. This is the end of our presentation. And as we are shy people, we won't sing or dance as requested because we're shy and we don't want to do it. Eat the rap. We won't. So, thank you for watching. Hope you didn't sleep. Um, and probably see you never. Goodbye. Bye. Okay, so guys, thank you very much for your presentation. It was really nice. And thank uh, to all people that uh, watched the video. And see you next uh, week when there will be a presentation about France. So goodbye. <laughs>